right there. I love it. Love what? You. What you're wearing, the way the sunlight's hitting your hair, the fact that you brought me a gift. Can I move now? Yes. Okay. Um, this is something that no self-respecting human being can live without. I know it's terribly unoriginal, but Ooh. you'll thank me every morning. <laughs> That's awesome. bring you presents more often. <laughs> this place is just fantastic. <laughs> oh, no false modesty there. What? You disagree? No, not a chance. I've loved it since the first time you showed it to me. I just can't wait till we get you set up and settled in. Mm. I like we. I'm a little curious, though. You could have moved in at any time. It's not like Mike was kicking you out, so why'd you choose to move in the day that Sonny goes on trial for murder? It's, it's really, really very comfortable. Really? Why are you dodging the question? Uh, why are we even still talking? <sighs> what do you think? Do we dare? When's your furniture coming? Uh, Don't answer that. When we start to get busy. How much do you want to bet? Well, then we better hurry up and get busy. Wait, you're really working overtime ignoring Sonny's trial. What? Who cares about the trial? They'll call me when I needed to be a witness, and that probably won't happen. Yeah, for but days. You, you've worked this case for so long, and, and he, now is the big payoff. Aren't you a little bit curious? I'm actually a lot more curious to see what you look like naked. has been going on, so I just... It's Maxie. She says the surgeant. It's so easy. This... I know, but but she's in a hospital. I can't just blow her off. Why am I saying to ignore her? I'm just saying, you know, maybe just throw it away a little while. Wait, what are you... Are you leaving? Well, we have to prioritize. Not that this is not a priority. It, it, just don't worry, okay? We're gonna make it happen. We have all the time in the world. Me for calling first? Yeah, yeah, you did good, Ma. Keep it up. Thanks for letting me come over. I really like the place. It's great, it really suits you. Yeah. Thanks. We think so too. And that would be you and Lulu? Uh, yeah, she, you know, helped me find the place. Well, well, she must really know you. I, mean, I think even your furniture from Brooklyn's gonna fit right in here. You're my baby, all grown up, <clears throat> job, a great new place, a great girl. Where did all the time go? All right, don't get all sentimental. You might catch me in a weak moment. What's the matter? Like, as long as you understand that what I'm about to say doesn't mean that I'm not still mad at you. Okay. You made me crazy. <laughs> I mean, you redefine the meaning of the word exasperated, but this whole assault that Christina's going through, seeing that, I just want you to know that I've appreciate just how awesome you are. Well, finally, you're here. Where have you been? But Dante's moved into his new place, so I was... Never mind any of that now. Just grab some. We have a lot of work to do. You can relax. Kate took the day off. Kate Howard? Yeah, she went somewhere with Coleman. I'm never going to understand that. Hey, don't knock it. Coleman makes Kate almost pleasant sometimes. In any event, you can just not make yourself crazy right now with all this stuff. Okay, well, Kate Howard is allowed to play hooky, but the fashion world never sleeps, and magazine deadlines are non-negotiable. We have an issue to finish. <coughs> Mr. 
Mexi, Mexi, Mexi. Oh. Mexi, I must insist. No more work. No more talking. You're not getting enough air. Perhaps an oxygen mask? No. Spinelli, no mask. If the oxygen mask will help you. It's not going to help, OK? It's giving up. It's ad admitting that something is inevitable. I'm not oblivious, you guys. I'm, I'm in my own body. I know I'm not getting any better. I know that I got my heart from BJ, and it's a miracle that I'm alive, but that also makes me vulnerable. And every time I'm in the hospital could be my last. I choose not to dwell on it. Please, just let me. What you just described, Max Mista, is denial. And in this case, very dangerous denial. That is your opinion? How I handle my health is my business. Okay, it's not just your business anymore. We're a team. And what affects one affects the other. And I'm not just going to stay passive and let you jeopardize or ignore your health. I'm going to go find Robin and inform her of this latest coughing episode and then let her medical expertise guide the way. Spinelli, don't you dare. This is not negotiable. I'm, I will not wear an oxygen mask. Maxie. <coughs> Come on, what's the big deal? It's an oxygen mask. It's a little thing. It's, it's going to make you feel better. It's going to give Spinelli peace of mind. He's miserable. He's blaming himself for your illness, you know? No, Lulu, it is not a small thing. And the oxygen mask is the first big step over the abyss. I remember being in this hospital when I was six years old. Before I had my transplant, when I was dying, even though no one would say anything. There's a pattern, okay? First the nasal cannula, and then the oxygen mask. And then that leads to this horrible tent thing where you're closed off from the rest of the world. And people have to wear protective gear to see you. But that doesn't matter because you can't touch them and they can't touch you. You just stare at them through plastic, acting like everything's gonna be fine. I don't want that. I feel like I still have so much more stuff to do. I know that you're really, you're really scared right now. But Maxie, you're the bravest person that I know. Please don't be nice to me, okay? I'm gonna cry and I might not stop. What do you want me to do? I want you to get out of this hospital. I want you to go do something fun. Do something fun with Dante. You guys should have sex or oh, take a walk in the park. Come on, Lulu, anything that just makes you happy to be alive. Question. Mm -hmm. Shoot. When Sonny was a boy, did you know he and his mother were being abused? Um, I knew. I mean, everybody knew. I mean, maybe not the full extent of it, but uh, just nobody would talk about it. Now, see, that, that is incomprehensible to me. I mean, I had you. Tough, fierce Olivia Falconeri, don't mess with her. I mean, if some jackass was wailing on me, you'd probably hit him upside the head with a Louisville slugger. Damn straight, I still would. Yeah, you would. Hi. Hey. Well, what is it? I need a hug. Okay. I'm really scared. Why? Maxie's in really bad shape, and I, I don't think that I... I didn't grasp it before, but there's no such thing as a minor infection. She's basically living with a death sentence over her head. Her heart could give out at any time. And she reject the transplant. She could die. Uh, you know, I had no idea. Maxie makes a lot of mistakes, and, and she's reckless, and she's impulsive. But she's living large. She is putting her faulty heart on the line and going after what she wants. And I think that I could learn a lesson. Look, we all could, right? We've just wasted so much time. Yeah, but we're making up for it. At least we're trying to, right? I know, but that's my point. We could be doing better. We, we, we shouldn't be taking each other for granted. We should be seizing moments and telling each other that we love each other. Because I love you. I do. And I, I don't want to miss any minute of us. I love you, I love you so damn much.